Good morning. Thank you for joining with us for a thought for today. This morning we want to come and look at the life of John Newton uh, and we pray that that might be helpful and profitable for each one of us. We'll commence with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, as we come into your presence and think about the life of John Newton, may that be helpful and strengthening and encouraging to each of us. And we pray, Father, as we reflect on our own lives and where we are, we pray that we'd know your help and encouragement. Remember, young people, as the school year comes to an end, we pray it will be a good summer. Pray that you'll keep them safe. Remember, people may be planning, going holiday, and at the moment not quite sure what's going to happen. We thank you, Father, that the COVID-19 is becoming well under control, especially in Northern Ireland. And therefore, we thank you for the easing of the restrictions, even though it may only be temporary. We pray that we'll make the best use of them and help us to be careful in all we do. In the worthy name of the Saviour we ask. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Tis grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, they are I first believe. Amazing grace, as I greatly loved him, by those who are Christians and those who have not yet come to trust the Lord. It describes the amazing change that takes place in our life when the Lord Jesus becomes our Saviour and Lord of our lives. The author, John Newton, who was one time a slave trader, with the tragic death of George Floyd and with the protest movement of the Black Lives Matters movement and with the desecration of uh, monuments, especially those statues with people uh, involved in the slave trade, we find that John Newton comes very much into focus these days. His childhood. John Newton was born in 1725. He had a godly mother and an ungodly seafaring father. His mother taught him the scriptures and the great hymns of Isaac Watt. But tragically, his mother died when he was six years of age. His father remarried again. But his stepmother was very different. Well, she had really no witness to in John and should no witness to in spiritual things. So John was very much left to his own devices and didn't go to school very much. At the age of 11, he went to sea with his father. By the time his father retired in 1742, John had done six voyages overseas. His life at sea. When John was 18 years of age, he was press ganged into the Navy. At this time, he lost all principles and had no fear of God. And he cursed and he swore so much that he became known as the Great Blasphemer. He was a, became a midshipman, but on one visit back home that he deserted his ship, he was caught, brought blank, stripped, flogged, and demoted. Such was the roughness of the life then. Some time later, on his way to, back to England, on the shores of Donegal, they ran into a terrible storm. The sails were ripped, the wood was ripped of the side of the ship, the ship was filling with water. It seemed inevitable that they're going to drown. John Newton was exhausted at manning the pumps. And, and therefore he was taken to the pumps and tied to the helm to try to hold the ship in its course. This time, John Newton had an opportunity to look back over his life and think about his spiritual condition. He began to pray and he found a Bible 
And reading Luke chapter 11 and verse 13, he was assured that God heard him. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit? This was the beginning of John Newton's conversion to Christ. Only God's amazing grace could take this rude, profane sailor and transform him into a child of God. Maybe you've been buffeted by the storms of life. You may reach a, a crisis point in your life. Death has stared you in the face and the past events of your life are being flashed up before you. You well remember the things that you were taught in Sunday school and church. Uh, You've begun searching for God. Uh, and you, like John Newton, can come to trust the Lord Jesus as your saviour and your friend. But the change in his life was not immediate. He became involved in a slave trade. John Newton became the captain of a slave ship. He had little or no thought for the African slaves in a ship. Slaves who revolted were lashed and put in thumbscrews to keep them quiet. In 1754, after a serious illness, he left the slave trade and took a job working in the customs at the port of Liverpool. In his spare time, he learned Greek and Hebrew. He believed that God was calling him to the Christian ministry. And after becoming a lay preacher, he sought to be able to enter the Anglican ministry in England. But it was seven years before he was accepted uh, and given a church in Buckinghamshire. Maybe, maybe you believe that God is calling you into some kind of Christian ministry. That you've been studying God's word. That you've been taking extra training. But the way ahead is unclear. The Lord seeks that you will have patience and he will help you through these trying times into his perfect will. There is no place like being where God wants you to be and doing what God wants you to be. John Newton, great preacher and pastor, in 1764, John and his beloved wife Mary moved to the little market town of Olay. He spent his morning studying the Bible and preparing servants, and his afternoons he spent visiting his parishioners. John Newton was both a great pastor and a great preacher. So popular was his preaching that his church was not able to hold all the people he wanted to come and hear him preach. For the Sunday evenings, John Newton often composed a hymn to help to explain the passage of Scripture. In 1779, 280 of his hymns, along with 65 hymns of his friend William Cowper, was publicised and a book, Holy Hymns. This included sweet hymns like The Sweet By and By, Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken, and of course, John Newton's best known hymn, Amazing Grace. Abolition of Slavery. That same year, John Newton received a call to be the rector of St Mary's and Woolnoth in London. He ministered not only to the London poor, but also to the rich and famous. While John London, John Newton was in London, he ministered not only to the poor, 
but for the rich and well-to-do. And many came, people came seeking his advice, including the MP William Wilberforce. John Newton supported Wilberforce in his campaign to abolish slavery. And he wrote a track entitled Thoughts About the African Trade Trade, which was very popular and did a great deal to help to advance the cause of the abolition of slavery. It spoke of the horrors of the African slave trade and his own involvement in it. John Newton lived to the age of 82. He never ceased to thank God for God's amazing grace. And he often told his friends, my memory is nearly gone, but I remember two great things, that I am a great sinner and that Christ is a great saviour. Verse 4 of Amazing Grace is not original, but it makes a powerful statement. When we've been there 10,000 years, we have no less days to sing his praise than when we first began. Is that your future? If not, why not receive Christ today and be able to look forward with hope and confidence what lies beyond the grave. Shall we pray? Father, thank you for this amazing man that you took the slave trader, you took that foul-mouthed man and made him such a mighty instrument of yours and used him so powerfully as a preacher, pastor, hymn writer. Father, Help each one of us to yield our lives to Jesus and let him take us and shape us and mould us to be a mighty inference for his praise and glory and the help to others. Amen.